Okay, it's a few minutes after the hour. I think probably most people have joined. Um, I wanna thank everyone for being here today. We're really excited about this webinar. Um, this is called Pro Feedback on Your Tracks and it's sponsored by Mixed. Uh, my name is Alex Mallet. My pronouns are he, him. And by way of visual description, I'm a uh, middle-aged dish white male wearing glasses with curly hair, wearing a collared shirt, and I'm in sort of the um, dining room area of my, of my home in Kansas City. Um, I'm development director at uh, Folk Alliance International. So before we begin, let's take a moment to note that we are joined today by folks from around the globe and to collectively recognize the importance, complexity, and difficulty of offering landed acknowledgements within online organizing, creation, and collaboration. I'm joining you today from Kansas City on the traditional lands of the Kansas Ka, Osage, Kickapoo, and Oshethi Sakoa nations. We invite you to not only join in acknowledging our shared responsibility to work towards rec reconciliation, but to commit to taking personal and meaningful actions towards healing the legacies of colonization, forced migration, and culture erasure. So to learn more about the legacy, indigenous legacy of the land you're on, uh, I'll just point nativeland.ca, it's in the chat. And you're also welcome to drop in your own land acknowledgement from wherever you're joining from throughout the world. It's my great uh, pleasure to introduce um, the founder and CEO of Mixed. Just to tell a little bit of a story about this platform, I think a lot of people used it to submit their music to this. Um, and then we'll jump in pretty quickly into what you're all here for, which is to hear feedback on select tracks. Chris, uh, over to you. Okay, thanks, Hans. Um, uh, hi uh, to everyone uh, watching and listening. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm the CEO of Mix. Um, essentially, Mixed is an um, online suite. Uh, we're trying to um, help people who want to move more of their audio files online. And we're trying to make um, a, a tool that you can have, like a mobile app and web app, um, that does things like Dropbox, but also does a lot more, it covers a lot more ground that are really good for musicians, um, from like searching and analyzing, uh, publishing and sharing um, stuff uh, for your audio. Um, we're trying to make some of the sort of more advanced tools available to people who didn't really have them outside of like large labels or large music organizations. And that's really the gist. And it, we're trying to uh, better enable things like what we're doing here um, with Folk Alliance um, International today, which is to be able to easily collect tracks and audio files and then be able to discuss them better. Um, and so it, we hope that we can also improve the sort of educational opportunities that might be available um, in the next like few years with better technology. Um, and that's basically it. Um, I can uh, show a little bit of it um, just so you get a sense of that, um, but you're gonna see a bunch of it um, uh, anyway, uh, because um, you know we're gonna be reviewing um, some extremely lovely music uh, that I feel fortunate that I got to hear any of. Um, uh, as a part of this. Um, so um, uh, uh, is it okay? It's okay if I share a screen for a little bit, right? Go for it. All right, um, this is it really quick. You'll notice it looks a lot like um, other things like um, uh, like Dropbox or Google Drive. Um, other than being in dark mode, there's folders. Um, and, but what's nice is that in addition to folders, they're gonna, we built features that um, those folks won't really build. Like we have playlists. Uh, having a folder structure isn't the only thing. You want to have different lists of being able to play and see things. Um, you want to be able to have things like uh, we were just using today, which is an inbox, so you can see, um, you have easily received tracks. Um, you want to have links, so it's easy to share things with people um, that uh, don't necessarily have an account um, with this app. Um, and that you'll have these groups. So you can have a bunch of um, different kinds of people you work with, but still have like all the advantages of having a structure um, and having folders and share. When we're trying to make this a lot easier than the, the seemingly sort of convoluted group sharing that exists on other sites, um, notably Google Drive. And that's basically it. We also do some other fun things. There are some like, um, uh, like uh, AI assisted investigative things that we do. Um, which is that we um, we can uh, analyze the chords in a song um, and try to give you guitar tabs for that. Um, we also can um, uh, 
basically we have comments on a track and we also uh, will transcribe the lyrics. In fact, a bunch of the things, some of the songs from today, um, uh, we didn't have to type out those lyrics that we'll see. Um, we were able to use um, AI to try and um, split the track and then also figure out, oh, hey, uh, what were people singing? Anyways, that's about it. Um, and I think I'm done um, uh, shilling for uh, our whole thing. <laughs> um, I'd rather just turn it over to you and get started talking about fantastic music. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, so we'll jump right in. Guillermo, I feel like you have the first track. I think what we'll do just to, to get to many tracks as possible. Guillermo, if you want to introduce yourself real quick, um, and we'll hear your both yours and Mary's feedback on the first track. Um, and Fawn, so Guillermo, introduce yourself, and then Fawn will play the track. And then Mary, when you review the next track, we'll, we'll have you do your intro too. Sounds good. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Guillermo Subauste. I'm a producer and engineer from Peru, but now living in Toronto, Canada, uh, which is the land of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, and the Haudenosaunee's, uh, and the Wendat peoples as well. Um, and yeah, I had a lot of fun looking at all the, uh, uh, listening to all the tracks everyone sent. We got over, four, over 30 of them. And uh, yeah, great job, everyone. Heavy words, tired heart, crushing pain, precious art, needlepoint, paper's edge, magic ink, raise the dead, cause everything's coming to a fast stop, everything's coming to a painful end, oh and we be tired of the scapegoat might have done, no black fire gun, tired of pirates done, I'm looking for a place that's peaceful enough to let it That's probably good. Yeah. I think we, we were going to listen to just in, kind of like intro, as Mary was saying there, uh, intro verse and then one chorus. Um, so I'll go with why I chose this song first. Um, I come from a punk back background and obviously now I'm working with a lot of folk, but on this song, I felt a lot of that influence for sure. Uh, I really liked how the acoustic uh, guitars with the fiddle as well and the electric were working I thought the, the vocal uh, delivery was great, very appropriate as well. Um, I wasn't 100% sure if the drums were programmed. They definitely had a lot of different parts and how the song builds into the chorus and, and it has different sections uh, that are very um, uh, char characteristic to what they're doing. Um, yeah, I thought all that stuff were great, but maybe uh, when it comes to the mix, and this is obviously because I do a lot of uh, a lot of mixing and mastering as well, I thought that the elements were there, uh, but maybe if the drums were programmed, I'm not 100% sure. It sounded a bit like it, but now listening, it sounded like maybe not. Uh, I think that it would sound great, great with real drums and maybe with a mix that is a bit more... Uh, that has a bit more powerful drums in that sense. Maybe the kick can be a bit louder, a bit less compressed. Uh, the reverb seems appropriate. And uh, and yeah, everything else I think worked out really well. I really like this song. I liked it a lot too. Um, 
total punk rock vibes. I was so surprised that it had fiddle on it, which is like a really bold move. And also for the sake of what Guillermo was saying about the, the way that your drums are coming through in the track, I wonder even if the fiddle could be reserved for later in the tune so that you can really let that punk rock feel come through. Um, and I felt like there's room in the intro for perhaps a maybe even the whole tune for a doubled vocal, a doubled lead vocal, just sort of on that slight low in the mix um, situation for a sort of classic lead vocal, but like to take it to a, a next punk rock level. Um, and anything, we're going to talk a lot today about like things that compete with each other. And anytime your drums, especially for punk, if your drums are not coming through as one of the main heroes of the track, then like, let's think about moving everything else out of the way, just like making space, you know? Yeah, it was so good though. Really, um, such, such excellent work. Um, yeah, loved it. Uh, it's written there, but I should remind everyone that the song is by the band called Tired Empire, and uh, it's called Morning Sun. Okay, next up, Mary, do you want to uh, introduce yourself? And sure. let's cue the next song. Yeah. Um, hey, everybody. My name's Mary Bragg. I am a Nashville-based artist, singer, songwriter, producer, engineer, uh, sometimes professor. <laughs> uh of songwriting and at, at berkeley so my mo is mostly from the songwriting perspective because i was first a singer and songwriter and i love this folk community i've learned so much about all things in life from folk alliance and i'm happy to be a part of this community and um thank you all so much for being a part of this conversation today i do want to say actually we are barreling through things today and I wanted to commend all of you for submitting such excellent work. Um, we, Guillermo and I selected as thoughtfully as we could things that could put us in a conversation um, about a, a number of things that contribute to a great song, a great recording, great production. So if your song is not reviewed today, please don't take that as like, you didn't you know, make the top whatever number of tracks as much as this is sort of how we're choosing to be most effective for the sake of the conversation they're all so good you're all so so excellent um and i'm here for it so i think i think let's let's put the next song do you know the meaning of the fog as it's lifting from the door of the morning Gone by Following your footsteps In the wrong direction In a song Floating up from your mind It's not because you're tall And you got no friends Not because you're weak And you reach the end Not because you're scared And you hate to be alone I hope you're clapping from home because this is like so much fun and that was Anne McHugh and the Cubist of Nashville Tennessee um, full disclosure I'm a fan of Anne's and this song to me is a great example of allowing all the best parts of a song and a production and a band to come together and serve the melody and the lyric 
there is so much happening here and it's all working together super well in the mix. Um, and yet, you have you're starting with an exceptional song with great hooks um incredible melodies that serve that part of the writing world which we talk about in terms of sectional identity having one section feel particularly original so that the other sections can also take up their own space not only in the mix but in terms of the 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 verse melody, the chorus melody, how original are those things? Are they deserving of all these elements? In this case, I think it totally is working. And ironically, I did not plan this um, to be the first example that underscores what I was saying before about a double vocal. This track has a doubled vocal on the lead. Um, if you're wondering why her voice sort of sounds like it has some delay on it, but it's not actually like a super clean delay, it's not Echo Boy, you know, uh, that's because that to me, and Anne can correct us if I'm wrong in the um, chat, um, that, if you've never heard that before, that is literally an additional performance of the lead vocal that is helping that lead vocal come forward in the mix and take the space that it deserves to be claiming. Um, if you haven't tried that, there were actually a lot of the songs that were submitted that did not have double vocals, and sometimes it's not appropriate for the format, the genre, but it is so much fun to just literally, it's like a whole additional take. And instead of just like only selecting one of them, you put the lead vocal in there, you get it nice and cleaned up, you got all your edits, you got, you still have your lead vocal at the, at the super hottest, hottest lead vocal point, but then that double vocal is going to be a little bit uh, lower than your lead vocal and sometimes way far down in the mix. Um, yes. Lisa says, yes, it's doubled. Great. Uh, Guillermo, do you have thoughts for, for uh, Anne McHugh and the Cubists? Uh, yeah, I love the track as well. I thought it was really, really well uh, accomplished. Uh, also love the double tracking. Um, and uh, also, and, and, uh, I was going to say this more as an advice for everyone that hasn't done it yet. Uh, one of the advantages of doing that is that it helps you uh, also listen to what it's recorded already. You know, for a lot of lead singers, when they have to do background vocals and other projects, they have a bit of a of an issue trying to like match consonants and and intention and all that stuff. So, getting good at doing double bug vocals is all is super super helpful and uh, and it's something that's gonna yeah it's gonna help you get a lot accomplished in the future. Uh, one thing from the mix perspective uh, that I I would would like to try it if I had mixed it myself. And Fawn, I think that it's possible that your original sound is, or a stereo sound is not selected because I could not hear the panning that I did here on the actual track when I played it from my computer. Um, but when it starts, the acoustic is panned to the right uh, and the vocals are in the middle. Uh, so for the intro, I was thinking maybe on either putting, maybe if you want to like play with really panned things, it would have been nice to try guitar panned all the way to the right and vocals only on the left kind of thing. And then once every instrument kicks in, the vocals are in the middle and then uh, the acoustic guitar could be doubled as well and then panned hard, which, you know, the little imperfections and rhythm and all that stuff gives it a very rhythmic and uh, a nice um, uh, feel as well. Because I also noticed there's a nice shaker or a tambourine going in the background as well. And if you're not doubling guitars, I find that if you have the acoustic guitar pan to one side, doing the tambourine or the shaker to the other one kind of gives you that nice balance of, of rhythm that, that ends up uh, uh, filling the, the spectrum a bit nicer, I, I find at least. Killer, excellent Good. work. And next tune. Yeah, let's listen to Who Knows by Jason Baker. Sure. 
Yeah, so uh, the reason I chose this track, uh, first, it has to do a little bit with the mix. And obviously, I know that a lot of these uh, tracks might have not been released. Some of them are released. Some of them are finished. Some of them are a work in progress. Uh, but with this one, uh, what I wanted to say is that mixing-wise, it feels that uh, a lot of the elements are kind of not in their actual play, like in the same room almost. Uh, there's a kick, and I can hear it but it doesn't have any low end and, and balancing uh, frequencies is something that helps the, your arrangement comes, uh, come through a lot. Like it actually helps everything sort of be married together, you know? Um, so kick, I could hear the attack of the kick, but there was no low end on it, which then makes the tambourine, which might've been an okay volume if the kick was a bit higher, uh, feel like it's almost too loud. Um, vocals are more present and oh yeah and then uh when it comes to the timing same thing like if 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 it's not a live performance and you're recording the instrument separately uh i think it really helps to take as many takes as you are, are you're gonna need to try to get things a bit tighter uh obviously you know as engineers we can fix most of those issues but ideally you get them uh while playing um, so yeah, sometimes it felt like the guitar was speeding up or the kick was not uh, uh, at the same tempo, you know, things were getting a bit out of out of control there a little bit. Um, and then for the structure, uh, the intro feels, you know, like it, it is an intro and then the verse comes in. And then I think because it goes to a pre-chorus uh, that I think does a one too many repetitions. Uh, usually... And again, again, this is all, you can do whatever you want. You can have a song with 12 verses if you want. But if you're wanting to get your song a bit, you know, to reach farther audiences and to go on radio and all that stuff, you want to get to the chorus a bit faster. And uh, you can, and if you love the pre-chorus, which has happened to a lot of songs that, that I've done myself, uh, you can have that long double repetition two plus one really because it does have an extra uh, an extra couple of bars there uh, to happen before the second chorus but maybe on the first chorus your pre-chorus is actually just a tiny bit shorter maybe half of what you had there uh, would have delivered the uh, or delivered the message a bit faster I think I want to add real quick for those of you who are recording at home like I learned how to do and I still do, I did some today right here in this room. Um, if you don't know about the, this, the great EQ spectrum, there are so many ways you can learn now about even how to visualize it. Even if you don't have, for example, like FabFilter Pro Q3, if you Google it, look at a YouTube video of it, understand <laughs> what's happening on the low end. Look at where your muddy points are. When people say something that is muddy, it usually means there are too many things happening at the same point of the EQ spectrum. If you've got too much low end, you got to cut the rumble on the acoustic guitar, on the kick drum. That kick drum needs to cut through. Um, some of the, some of the things that we'll talk about today might seem over your head. I promise you they are not. You just have to do a little Googling and a little learning as you go. Um, anyway, really uh really excellent song and shall we move on to the next tune i think and yeah i think we'll we'll do our best on the songwriting thing this is mostly a production conversation today but for sure for those of you who are looking more about um songwriting we will do our best to uh include some of that thought as well every day when i wake up i look for the sound 
end of the hope for the future reach so deep i'm ready to make my way falling forward i can't help looking for something, something to, to give something to live Sweet. Uh, do you want to go first on this one, Mary, or should I? Sure, happy to go first. Um, I, the only thing I'll say about the mix is that because of the context of the tune, which is so great, super well done, y'all. Because of the context of the tune, I really love to hear, especially that female lead vocal, have some more compression, some more shine um and maybe some there's this thing called fresh air it's ridiculous there's a series of plugins y'all that will change your life and essentially it's like how can we fool around with compression how can we incorporate um not just the level which is compression right you take the low parts and make them hotter the high parts and make them quieter so there's there's more of an even level there and then it takes the entire level and raises that whole thing up so also you only want to add compression after you've sorted out the eq issues with an instrument in this case i think that voice could take some of the low end off the run the, the rumble of the voice which is pretty common um and then you can take that compression level up but also incorporating some shine to it it could be um some some overdrive even like i actually these days i'm enjoying using De decapitator on vocals <laughs> i don't know how you feel about that guillermo um uh, that's just a plug-in it's a it's really fun to fool around with plugins that like decapitator is traditionally used for drums but when you put it on a voice let's see what happens so in this case I'd love to hear both vocals have um, less of a pretty quality and more of a sort of sharp reggae uh, experience that can sort of be really closely associated to the, the context of the lyric. What do you think, Yaron? Yeah, I agree. I agree 100% uh, with all that. Uh, as for the song itself, I loved it. Um, I picked it because I find it to be like very uplifting and also uh, very well done with regards to the lyrics and what's happening with the melodies as well. How the end of the chorus ends up actually doing the lift up uh, with the melodies of both singers there. Um, yeah, the organ was really cool. The delays, we didn't get to the bridge, but in the bridge, there's some really nice effects being put on the vocals uh, for that as well. The only thing I would I would have liked to hear more of, I know there's two singers, but there's a lot of sections where I didn't hear any extra harmonies. And I felt like, yeah, the organ is obviously, you know, covering a lot of a lot of uh, harmonic content, but it would have been nice to hear some oohs or ahs or like just some more stacks of 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 melodies following what the lyrics are doing or just sort of pads. Uh, would have really, you know, the song is great, but it would have taken it even to an extra like higher level, you know? I'll agree with that a thousand percent. Again, we're going to be agreeing with each other a lot today. It's <laughs> just like, it's the way we, we like to say yes and at Folk Alliance, don't we? Hey, Folk Alliance. Um, dude, everybody, y'all need to be putting some background vocals on your tracks. I listen to, we listen to every single song. And yes, person who asked your question, uh, Brant, we did receive your song. Great song. It's one that I don't believe we are getting to today, but this is an example of um, this is unrelated to you, Brant, just FYI. So few songs had background vocals. 
I would love for you to explore what Guillermo is saying. See what your experience of the song can become when you add background vocals. And it's not just a harmony part from one person. It's what would Amy Ray do? It's a call and response situation. It's if there's not something in a space and you're like, why am I bored right now? Let's find something that's fun. Like it doesn't always have to be an instrument. That's one thing I wanted to share with y'all today too is so many of these tracks sound great. So many of you have every instrument under the sun on your tracks and one voice. Like let's explore together how a voice is the thing that people want to hear. No offense to every instrumentalist. But if it's a song, in most cases here, these songs were delivered by a voice. I think there was maybe one instrumental song. But if your intention is for the voice to be the, the primary vessel of delivery, let it be. You see what I mean? Anyway, I'm going to shut up. Let's move on. <laughs> this is Ordinary Sunrise from Jay Linden. Another night time gone, another day to see. Dreaming drifts away, someplace you can't be. Just an ordinary sunrise coming round. Great. That was great. Thanks, Fawn. Uh, I guess I'll start with this one, unless you want to start, Mary? No. Okay. Great. Uh, I love the the hook, the chorus of this song. I think it, it works really well. Um, the melodies there, the uh, yeah, how it leads to it from the verse. Also, there are very distinct sections. And, uh, and also, when it comes to melodies, uh, Sometimes, you know, if you're writing all your songs on a guitar, for example, uh, it's easy to sort of fall into the same uh, like melody rhythmic structures, you know, um, and, you know, it's nice sometimes to when you're playing to try to if you're always starting in the tonic, like in the same note as the chord that you're playing to try starting on a third or a fifth or like different different notes that are part of the chord or not, if you want to get a bit, you know, funkier or jazzier. Um, but yeah, I think it worked really well with this one. Nice space timing uh, on the melody on the chorus as well, leaving a lot of space. You don't have to fill out every single bit of uh, of the song with melody itself. Um, so all that stuff I liked a lot. Um, when it comes to the mix, yeah, I feel like the kick could have been louder again. Uh, it's hard when you're monitoring on headphones or if you're doing all this stuff at home. Uh, you might not be able to hear that much, but high pass filtering, uh, things that you can't hear, and then trying to boost the, those that you can uh, will allow you to make a mix that when you listen to it in, in your car, for example, uh, it's not going to be all of a sudden all sub bass that you couldn't hear at home. Uh, so don't be afraid to to make, you know, especially uh, uh, kick or bass um, be audible in the mix itself. Um, and then the only other thing that I felt that could have been improved is that once the tambourine comes in and the drums come in as well, 
uh, I could really feel the uh, the one or, or you know the start of every every uh, every measure uh, on this song. But on the intro, there's a little bit of maybe it's a pattern that is doing in the guitar. It's, it's not very traditional, and it might work great for the song. But I felt a bit lost at first. Uh, like the bass was doing one big uh, held note on on the uh, on the first beat of the measure, but then the guitar was doing a bit of a syncopated uh, rhythm that got me a bit confused and until everything came in basically um so maybe doing that part a bit simpler or or you know more traditional in that sense would would help fix that but again maybe maybe that's what you're going for in which case i'll shut up and pass it to mary <laughs> yeah i agree with that so much and it, it it gives us an opportunity to just talk for a moment about the role of each instrument in this case, you have a lot of responsibility being carried by the banjo and banjo in this case is 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 having to be perfect and bless your heart for that attempt all those eighth notes are I think competing rhythmically with everything else everything else that's happening in the track so even that mandolin, I would say, instead of just strumming along consider what else it can do the same thing kind of like the amy ray comment that's amy ray of the indigo girls in case you're wondering um if you've got your guitar and your banjo and your bass and your drums laying down the time mandolin even though it sure can also lay down the time and, and take up some space it doesn't have to consider instead of a strum could it be a single note melody that is in relationship to everything else that's happening? And also, we're all going in the studio these days thinking, all right, everybody's here, I've got my song. It's time, this is our big moment, right? Some of that just needs a, a, a quick pause to say, instead of just pressing record and going and adding and adding and adding and adding, explore musically what else can be happening the music wants you to take the time to explore anyway great track let's move on let's see the next track is the world is on fire annette wasilic hey annette precious world green and blue my heart aches for the love of you everywhere I turn seems we've all gone wrong but I don't believe all our love is gone The world is on fire The world is on fire Come live with me The world is on fire The world is on fire The world is on fire Come live Waters rising. Da, 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 da. Talk about a response to a melody. It's literally, I did not plan that, I swear. Da, 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 da. Mm, that's literally the kind of stuff I'm talking about with the call and response. What is the music asking for in the spaces where a lyric does not exist? Um, I love this song. I think it's really well written. Um, that melodic hook in the chorus is super well established and again with sectional identity stands alone in response to what's happening in the verses which is setting your track up wow thunder huh? setting your track up for great success if you put the time in on that actual writing 
then you're going to be off to the races in the studio. Guillermo, what, what comments do you have for Annette? Uh, I think they did an amazing job. Uh, the song is also, you know, really well accomplished. I uh, agree 100% with what you're saying uh, regarding the the counterpoint and the melody of the vocals with the kind of riff that the guitar is hinting. Um, well, it's on fire. Sorry, I lost my notes here. Uh, oh, yeah. As for the mix itself, I would say that the percussion was really nice. Um, it could have been a bit louder because sometimes, and I'm talking about the congas or the bongos that were uh, playing there. It would, they would get lost sometimes when the vocal gets loud. Um, they sort of disappear and then it's just shaker and acoustic guitar. Um, and other, other than that, uh, when, when it comes to the songwriting, I would dare suggest making the first chorus a bit shorter. Uh, mm -hmm. Cause it does that. go a bit twice. The song is about four minutes long. And again, like I, I hate it when people used to talk like that, but now I go with just how it feels. It felt like, like I was ready to hear more of the verse and the story. And then again, you know, once you get to the second chorus then you can have it at the same length as you had before. I was just like ready to, to move on to the next section basically. Really well done with the backup vocals too. It sort of mm -hmm. immediately feels like an invitation that is completely in line with the lyric. Really well done. Um, I think what we're gonna do now is, yeah, sexual identities. My, it's one of my favorite things. I think that I learned that from, uh, I think it was Craig Carruthers who I first heard talk about that. Um, I think we're gonna move to sort of a rapid fire um, situation as then we're going to try to get it through as many remaining songs as we possibly can in the next 14 minutes um and let's see what is next this is lay you down from jill jackson so we're still going to listen to i believe verse chorus is that the the plan y'all and then we'll do like 30 to 45 seconds of commentary uh before we move on to the next song Have you ever seen a world like this one? I've never seen a world like this one Where all the bad evaporates Along with all the big mistakes they are small, irrelevant When you have life that's heaven sent And I will lay you down And I So good i'm so in it thank you all for clapping in your spaces for these incredible performances and songs um i would encourage you to consider instead of having that reverb existing pan left for the whole tune consider that as a reverb throw that it only might occur in a couple of spaces where it might be in conjunction with what you're trying to say in the lyric so that's just an automation where it's like doesn't exist doesn't exist oh there's a reverb throw and then it comes out again um one other thing on that vocal level is i'm really losing it in the chorus and i really don't want to um it, i think it might be because of what's happening in the timbre of your voice in that range but also some 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 simple clip gaining is going to help with that so you literally just go in and increase the level of certain syllables even um to make sure you're not losing that performance how about from you Guillermo 
Oh, wait, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, one more thing. This is uh, this is my pick because very, very, very important note. At 0 52, the 52 second mark, I can hear a double breath. That means I can hear the comp. I can hear the edit. You got to make sure that is not there. Crossfade it. Listen again. Isolate the vocals. Listen to it by itself. Listen for every single cut. Okay, Guillermo, what you got? Yeah, I agree 100%. At first, uh, the reverb. I love the reverb, by the way, especially how it was banned. But as you're saying, once the music kicks in, it feels like, okay, we had it on the intro. Now let's move to move on to something more conventional or put it on both ears instead of just one, because then it feels like you're falling almost only to one side. Uh, the structure of the song feels great. Um, as for the mix part, I feel like the acoustic guitar, even though it wasn't loud, it felt like it was over compressed from the beginning. Like when when there's a strum and you feel like the acoustic gets quieter on that section and then it sort of comes out, like it's breathing almost, like it's pumping, uh, maybe, you know, threshold up a little bit and then volume or the gain compensation on the compressor up a little bit so that, so that it feels a bit more natural, at least for my liking. Let's move on to the next track, which is Pause and Rewind by... We'll see in one second. <laughs> Galley sixteen ten. Try to get up before the kids. I hear you rustling down the hall. Love the way you look when you're half asleep Now the world could implode in on itself I wouldn't care at all Just trying to steal a little time Before they call you and come running in no, We don't have to talk at all Open the window, let the morning in Catching lightning in a teacup We hate to cut these off, y'all. That's so good. I get so much Randy Newman and Jackson Brown from this song. Um, I, your heart is coming through here so effectively. I just want to commend you on letting that intimacy not be taken from something else it's real easy to forget what songs are about when you're putting them down but this to me is like i am just i'm the person you wrote the song for like i am here for it um with that i think when the full band does come in later in the tune i lose a little bit of that intimacy that you might want to consider um making sure that 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 conversation between you and the listener is not interrupted all the elements should be supporting that relationship not distracting from it uh the strings for example are great we didn't hear them in this moment they're they sound so good but make sure they're not competing with the sort of hero of the song what you got guillermo yeah the song is it's uh it's not a uh like you know fast song or complicated song in that sense it starts with a nice uh relaxed sort of great sounding piano by the way and then a vocal delivery that's what as you're as you're saying uh, it does really transmit the emotions of the lyrics um but then yeah when the strings come in it gets a little bit busy with the uh with the melodies that the the strings themselves are doing a little bit of pizzicato and like different stuff that that maybe wasn't that necessary in the song. It feels like, yeah, it takes away from the uh, from the intimacy of it. And then um, as for other people as well, when you're singing, it's hard sometimes to be in the studio. It's hard to listen to your voice, you know, so close. You're not used to that if you've been doing a lot of live sound and you feel like you're better live. But I promise you that if you solo your vocal from a live performance, 
uh, versus a, sol a vocal from the studio, you'll see that the studio one is much, much better. Uh, sometimes we get fooled by the adrenaline and everything that's happening live. So you're already on to, the, to a good path. So after that, after you get all those technicalities away, then just take a moment, close your eyes, or use your hands as well to gesticulate as much as you can as you're singing, if it helps you transmit the emotion of what you're saying. Because even though it's audio and it feels like it's harder to see for people, uh, people can feel it. It's a bit more, more primal in that sense. So great job. So good. This is Believe It or Not from RWS, RWS. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have your name. Let's hear it. It's all in your head, she said to me, wondering to myself, where else would it be? My thoughts tend to stop there occasionally, believe it or not. She claims I don't think things all the way through, or recognize situations like I used to. But I see more than she thinks I do Believe it or not Believe it or not It's all part of my plan Got her right where she wants me In the palm of her hand That puts me in the perfect spot Believe it or not Awesome song, so good this is one I wanted to include because um, it's a great title, um, great work overall. You might consider enunciating those T's a little less because believe it or not, it's such a phrase that is in the common vernacular that the listener is gonna get those T's. And in this case, those T's are very loud in the mix that it feels a little hot in the mix to me. Um, and one thing also here that's an interesting conversation to have is the splice world. I'm not sure if those are um, samples that you're using, but for example, the shaker to me should be an added element that perhaps shouldn't be in the whole song. Guillermo, do you have thoughts about how we can be more additive and inventive with shaker and tambourine instead of using it throughout yeah absolutely the the problem with using it throughout is that then it's not a special anymore you know i i find that uh as a like rule of thumb if you want to start with something it might be better to put it on choruses first uh and then seeing how it works from that if you have it on the intro and then you take it out in the chorus and you need to have something to replace it either a pattern on a hi-hat or or an acoustic guitar that's doing a similar rhythm to what the uh, shaker was doing, uh, or have it as well, but change the volume of it so that so that it's less present and less less uh, less of a protagonist on the uh, in the song as well. Which, by the way, was written uh, by Ronnie Scott. Um, and then one thing I love I would have loved to try on this song is that at the end of the chorus you stop for one beat and then it comes back in. Uh, try three beats instead or like just because it felt like the, the gap there was a bit too short. Uh, so let it ring a little bit, wait a couple more beats and then come in. And, and I feel like it would have a, a more um, uh, impactful, it would be more of an impactful moment if you, if you let that happen. Next song. When I leave this world What will they say of me? Who are the faces I'll see When I leave this world When my time is done Memory erases Will I just leave spaces When my time is done 
When I have moved on What will be my story Tragedy or glory When I have moved on And after I am gone Will anyone be mourning Will I be used to issue warning After I am gone Sweet. Uh, this track was submitted uh, by Scott Wolfson and other heroes, and it's called When I Leave This World. Uh, love the track. It's really cool. I think the structure also is well, it's well done. You have, you have nice sections that, that really do translate. Um, when it comes to the mix, I felt like the, uh, the kick was a bit too loud on this one for a change. I felt it was a bit too, too boomy. It uh, could have been scooped a little bit more. And then in the intro, and then throughout the song, which was surprising, uh, the piano, which I think I have a good feeling is a, is a logic piano or like a sampled piano. Uh, it felt like it was also too scooped. It didn't have that much low mid. Uh, so maybe having it a bit more present or it would have been cool to in the intro have it as small as that, but then also make the vocal smaller. So it feels like everything is like in a small radio almost. And then once the music comes in, then then the piano becomes more alive with all the frequencies it was missing before, which is the opposite of what's happening in the chorus, where your vocal goes to a higher register, and then it feels like there's a high pass filter that has cut out all that nice proximity effect that you had on the verses. Um, so yeah, a bit of both of those things, I would say. What about you, Mary? All of the above. Um, that's that's really great work, Scott. And I agree that there's a lot of work to be done there on the low end. Um, I found that the bass especially was really muddy, but that might also be informed by the work that you're going to do on the piano and the kick. So that's one yeah. thing that might be a, a good of parting advice is that remember that literally everything you change affects everything else um that's good news and bad news so when you're when you're adjusting your mix it isn't just oh let me move this and move this and move this and try this here and this uh -uh. you can do that but I always like do a little save as and and call it something new so that you can revert back to the last version of something and remember why it was that perhaps your your base wasn't as muddy in the last version um because every single adjustment to every plugin every compressor every eq is going to affect how everything else is coming through um, in the mix so yeah uh, gosh have we just like that just like whoa we've reached we have reached the the end of our our moment. I bet Alex wow. is going to come back. Yes, I'm back. Remember me from the beginning <laughs> of the webinar? Wow, I learned so much. That was so amazing. I felt like I knew everything, which was so the opposite of true. Um, and I want to thank you, Mary and Guillermo, for just sharing your depth of knowledge with us. I can't imagine anyone's walking away without just like a, a new perspective on on something, even an expert. So that was really, really awesome. Um, I also want to thank uh, Chris and thank Mixed for sponsoring this webinar, for being our partner with Folk Alliance International. We're not able to do our work without you, um, and, and we're really grateful for that support. Um, one last note. Um, our year-round and online offerings are provided at no cost, um, thanks to the generosity of donors. Um, so I, first of all, I want to thank everyone that supported us. And if you'd like to support our, our work, donations can be made at folk.org slash donate. Um, so I'll wrap there. Uh, thank you everyone for submitting and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.
Thank you, Alex. Thank you all again so much for submitting all the songs. So fun. Yes, thank you. Bye, Guillermo. Bye, Bye. Chris. Bye, Pond. See y'all. See you next time. <laughs>